All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the application. All right, so the first thing we have to figure out is how do you get to the Jade? Uh, if you put in Google right now and type in Fairfax Jade, at least for us, uh, that'll be the first uh, thing you will see. So you always have that option. Additionally, if you just want to type in an address bar, we have a not too complicated address. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it right here. If we just type in fairfaxcounty.gov slash gof slash jade, you'll get there as well. In addition, throughout the fairfaxcounty.gov website, we will have a lot of links to the Jade uh, off the maps and data page, the map section, as well as other agencies that want to push some of their uh, customers or viewers to the Jade because they have a lot of data they want to show off there. You'll see links there. So a lot of good ways to get there. As far as dev excuse me, devices to see the Jade, any modern browser should take you there and have no problems. Uh, laptops, desktops, tablets, you get all the same experience, hopefully. It is available on smartphones if you want to take something into the field, but it is quite a bit different. Uh, all the data is still there in the smartphone, but a lot of the functionality, some of the tools is either different or missing because of the small screen. It's just some compromises we'd have to make. So if you want the full Jade experience, we do recommend, again, that laptop, desktop, or tablet environment. All right, let's take a look at what you're seeing when you first open the Jade. Uh, on the left-hand side, by default, we open uh, the left-hand panel here. We have the Home panel or the Home tab. This tells you a lot of information about some of the, the commonly used functions within the Jade. If you want more information than that one line of description about it, you can always click the Learn More, and they'll take you to more detailed written descriptions of those. Also, if you scroll down here, to the bottom, we have a provide feedback. We hope you use that. We want the people and the, and the public and industry that find this useful uh, to give us feedback and what's working, what's not working. But also, as Brendan said, this will be uh, updated frequently. And we want to integrate those suggestions, maybe new data, new kind of functionality, a new kind of report, whatever it may be. Let us know. We will look at that very seriously and try to do the best we can in making this more useful for you. Uh, perhaps you've already seen it. We also have a 10-minute overview video, so if you don't have an hour like today and you just want to get a sense of the kind of capabilities you can do, you can watch it there as well. All right, as far as the general layout beyond that panel, this is the map view. So for any mapping or GIS application, this is your main point of interaction. This is the fun stuff where you watch things draw. We can make it bigger because it is so important by minimizing the left panel by clicking that right there. We can really maximize the screen real estate to the map view. I'm going to go ahead and put that back, though. As far as some of the floating tools you have on top of the map view here, we have a base map selector, a coordinates tool, a scale bar here. In the lower right, easy to miss what that arrow is, an inset map. We'll talk about all these a little bit later, just introducing what we're looking at. On the upper right, we'll, there's the global search. We'll talk about that in detail later. And also, I want to right here, which is just some of the same uh, workflows or buttons that we can access in the home panel or in the toolbar we'll see in a second. Just another way to get there, maybe quicker if that's the way you want to do it. We also have a way to zoom in and out and use bookmarks on here. In addition to that, we have tools and toolbars and tabs at the top here. I recommend the first at least few times you use the Jade to go ahead and click on tool labels. That way you're not just looking at the icons, you have a little description about what those icons are. So we'll go about a lot of this in detail later, but just to introduce what we're seeing. On the basic tools, we have our navigation tools or ways to get around on the map. We have selection tools. These are tools that are used to uh, say certain features that you wanna put in a list or analyze. You can make a list of those with the selection tools. We have two ways of making maps. One is just taking a screenshot. The other one is a more formal map with insets and scale bars and legends and so on. We have bird's eye view. This is a way of looking imagery, not that traditional top-down view, but actually looking at it at an angle, like you're looking outside of an airplane window. So you actually see the sides of things rather than just the rooftops. This is the first time we're offering this kind of imagery to the public. This is a big deal. The only application right now that is offering that, we'll talk about that in detail later. You can share interactive maps. So if you have certain layers or tool, uh, sorry, layers or map extents you want to share with a colleague, you can give them a link right here and they can go right to what you're looking at. And another way to open the home panel. Under reports, we have a couple of uh, reports based on parcels, the general report and environmental report. Uh, this is a big deal, a big time saver with one click. You can get a lot of information about any parcel within the county. We'll talk about that in detail later as well. Searches, these are individual layer searches versus the global search on the upper right of the map view. 
Measurement tools, you can measure, whether you're measuring imagery or some of the map features on here, different kind of geometries to measure. In addition, we have drawing tools, using a lot of those kind of same geometries to mark up the map, in addition to dropping some points or even adding text to your map. All right, but the really the main source of uh, interaction you probably will have within the Jade application is with your map layers. It's all about the data. There's just different ways to view, manipulate the data. So let's take a look at that. The way to get to layers, or at least one way, is in the bottom of the left-hand panel. We have the Layers tab. And on the Layers tab here, we have the uh, layers listed here in groups. Now, these groups are not individual layers. They're just groups of layers. So we're not, if I turn, there's not a property and planning layer or a community layer. These are groups. So if I want to go ahead and take a peek at what's inside there, I can click the plus sign. That'll expand it out. You'll see even within the groups, we have a series of subgroups. These are not individual layers as well. If I want to see individual layers, I keep going until I don't see any of those plus signs. Address points, for instance, is an individual layer I can turn on and off. And what we're going to do is take a few minutes not to talk about every layer we have because we have over 170 of these in the Jade application. But we want to give you a sense of the kinds of layers we have here on the kind of breadth of data you have to work with and uh, at. All right, so under land description of property and planning, these are the layers that deal with uh, what you might see in the official Fairfax County real property map, or if you ever use the digital map viewer application, seeing those kind of maps. So address points, parcel or property boundaries, subdivisions, that type of thing is on there as well. I do want to make a special point about parcels because this is property boundaries. Uh, it causes some confusion with the public sometimes. We have a whole layer of every parcel, but the accuracy of that layer varies. Sometimes it can be within a few inches of where it probably should be. Sometimes it could be many feet, 10, 15, 20 feet off. So if you're trying to use these parcel or property boundaries, determining things like you would with a survey, is this on a property or off a property, realize that the line can kind of swing back and forth from reality a little bit. So uh, it's not a replacement for a survey. Okay. Uh, after land description, we have land development. This is a lot of the layers that Department of Planning and Development, which used to be called uh, Department of Planning and Zoning, uh, maintain here. Uh, planning sectors, areas, or even the comprehensive base plan, uh, as well as zoning districts, if you want to see that. Below that, we have special tax districts. These are districts where uh, you have special tax assessments, maybe for a transportation area or for a recreation center. Scrolling down, we have overlay districts. These are the individual districts that are referenced in the comprehensive plan. So you can see those as individual layers. And then Tyson's. There's a lot of action going on in Tyson's development that has its own plan, official plan for developing Tyson's. And a lot of the data in that plan is represented in layers here for Tyson's. All right, you'll see when I open up and expand all of these, it becomes kind of hard to scroll and see because we just see so much data here. So what I recommend is after you're done looking at the layers in a group, you maybe turn it on or moved on to another group to go ahead and minimize it like I'm doing here so that it's much easier to uh, scroll and work with later. All right, continuing on with community, we'll go give it back to Brendan. Looking in the community group, we have public facilities. These are government centers, fire stations, libraries, places of worship. Uh, we also have the school boundaries, uh, attendance areas. You can see if you turn all these on the, the way the school attendance areas work in pyramids, uh, the school facilities themselves. We also have electoral, in the electoral group, polling places, voting precincts, uh, and your state, uh, state districts, delegate districts. Also, under human services, this is the human services region and their office offices. The human services regions are uh, the business areas of how human services does a, a lot of their uh, dividing up of, of work. Under recreation, we do have playgrounds, courts, fields, and parks. Under the parks, I would like to note that we have both Fairfax County data and Northern Virginia Regional Park Authority data. So there's multiple uh, uh, multiple agencies that uh, contributing there. And lastly, under administrative boundaries, we have zip codes, uh, the borders, and the census geographies, which are very important to a lot of people. All right, continuing our survey, we'll go ahead and minimize the community and go back to infrastructure and environment, another big group here. 
All right, under built structures here, open that guy up. We have our buildings. We also have pavement, pavement being anything that's paved over, whether it's a road, a driveway, a parking lot, that's all represented there. We also have areas of interest. This is actually what we search upon up in the global search. We'll talk about that later. So it has a lot of things from shopping centers to schools to parks and so on on there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. Move on to roadways. Roadways are your road center lines. They're not the pavement where you can see how wide a road is, but a way of looking at the road network. You'll see here also we have the roadway maintenance responsibility. This is a layer that determines, not determines, but actually shows you uh, which, uh, sorry, agency is responsible for maintaining that road. So that if it's VDOT, is it a private entity? Is it some agency within Fairfax County can see that? I wanna contrast this with some of our other targeted apps. We had over 70 other interactive mapping applications on our fairfaxcounty.gov website. One of those being the roadway maintenance responsibility uh, application. So if you're just looking at road segments and wanna determine who is responsible for a road segment, I'd rec recommend you use that targeted application rather than going into the Jade and opening it here. However, if you wanna see roadways maintenance responsibility and contrast it with some other layers and see how they interact, they make subdivisions, uh, property boundaries and things, then maybe you do wanna go in the Jade and look at it here. So there's different ways to approach that. Non-motorized transportation, so this is for bikes and trails. Do realize that some trails are here and other trails are actually in the recreation group because they go through parks. Under transit, we have park and rides, the Fairfax connector, bus routes. We also have our metro rail routes and stations, including the planned routes and stations. Uh, we do not have metro bus routes, however. Under transportation and planning, it's from our department of transportation. They have their capital projects or future, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, transportation infrastructure uh, plans for that as well. In addition, we can look at community parking districts. All right, we're gonna move on to more environmental-like layers here. With hydrology, we have water features, be they ponds or streams or ditches, they're all in there. We also have floodplains here, which can be kind of useful, especially for development, whether you want to you know, make sure you're not belting in a floodplain. 100-year floodplains, also looking at floodplain easements, or even dam breach inundation areas. If one of the dam fails, this is what would be underwater. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. Uh, we also have watersheds in there. I'll go ahead and turn off hydrology, minimize that. And we'll go to vegetation. It's looking at tree cover. Uh, we have the most recent one being 2015. Under soils, we have both the old soil survey and the official current soil survey. We also have a list of a lot of what we call problem soils that in development process, these can cause special issues like asbestos or precautions you have to take. You can map those out as well. And then we get towards the bottom here, we have utilities. The major utility lines are really transmission lines. These aren't service lines, individual houses, but, you know, major electrical transmission or gas transmission. In addition to seeing street lights, and then we have stormwater infrastructure. Okay, so we have a question coming in, so I'll just finish this up. Uh, stormwater infrastructure, we have a lot of stuff here. If I go ahead and turn this on, this is fairly detailed infrastructure information. If I zoom in here until I can see it, and we have all sorts of things here, stormwater projects, stormwater structures. We have, you can see all the kinds of features that are there. Whenever you see all these features for an individual uh, map layer, we can toggle that legend on and off so that stream, uh, scrolling is a little bit easier. And I'll go ahead and do that. And that way it's easier to see what you have here. So the question. Two questions. We can't hear you unless you're up there. Is there an FAQ site about Jade? Uh, we have documentation, but uh, not an FAQ site. That's a good idea. So as we kind of get more feedback from people like you and others, we can create that. See if some common questions. And also there's another question here. Is there a way to see all county trails, park authority and public works in one view and privately maintained tra uh, trails in Jade? So we do have walkways and, uh, and from uh, public works. We also have the trails from parks. You can turn both those layers on, even though they're in separate locations, you can see them in one view. I'm not sure what is tracked in private uh, walkways or trails, but if it happens to be in our system, you can see it that way. All right. All right, so moving on from stormwater, the last thing we have here for some of these overlay layers are the wastewater uh, management areas. So we have a wastewater utility here in the county, but unlike stormwater, we're not sharing the actual infrastructure of it. But you can see whether you're in or out of the sewer service area, as well as looking at uh, subsheds, sheds, and sewer treatment areas. 
Just to add a little bit to the answer for the question about trails, if you turn on, as Matt said, if you turn on layers from different groups, you will see all of them on the map at the same time. We will probably be making themes uh, over the course of time, which will make it easier for those types of things to occur. Let me talk a little bit as I close this group about base maps. Base maps are exactly what they sound like. They're the, uh, the core of which the vector layers, or which we're showing in those groups, draw on top of. So the default, default base map, and I'm going to open up the base map group. The default base map is called the world topographic base map. And you'll notice, uh, as we zoom out later on, that this is a worldwide base map that we are contributing our data to be a part of. So it has, th it has lots of features, building footprints on it. You can switch, and if you notice here, I'm in the Tyson's area, you can switch to the real property base map. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to turn off the planning and property and planning group. And this is the actual uh, tax map as you would get if you came to our office or looking at it in the digital map viewer, but you'll notice it's seamless. So it's the base map turned into uh, the parcel data turned into a base map. One of the great advantages of base maps is that they draw very quickly. So you notice as I'm panning and zooming, they, they draw very, uh, very fast. The other thing I would like to note, uh, as I'm doing this, I'm scrolling in and out just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And when I pan and zoom to the left, right, I'm just using the left mouse click and dragging and moving, moving back and forth. We also have a base map that has the zoning with the real property. And this is all the zoning shown as fill patterns. So if you're familiar with zoning, these should mean a lot to you. Lastly, we have two other base maps. One is a light gray and dark gray base map. These are meant to be more muted and they're meant to accentuate the data on top of them. So if I were to turn back on the zoning and the property, you'll notice how the parcel lines really stand out over top of the gray base map. It's more about the data on top of the base map than the data than the base map itself. I'm going to turn it back over to Matt. All right, let's talk about imagery. We have imagery as well as base maps that could be the background for your maps. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, get a better view of uh, Tyson's here. All right, if I turn on imagery, there it is. It's on. But the problem is, this is a good point, a little departure to talk about how it works in this application, a lot of mapping and GIS applications. This layer list we have here not only is showing which layers are available to turn on and off, it's also indicating drawing order. And by drawing order, what I mean is one layer draws first, then another layer on top of it draws on top of it. Because imagery is at the bottom, it's always a, every other layer that's not imagery will draw on top of that, which means right now, the topographic base map is on top of the imagery. And since there are no gaps in the topographic base map, it actually is a worldwide surface, uh, you're not going to see any of the imagery because it's completely covering it up. However, if I turn off base maps like I do here, then voila, I can see the imagery. I'm going to turn off some of that layer. And what we're looking at right now, if I go ahead and expand it right here, is the 2017 imagery. Right now, that is our most recent imagery. However, within weeks, hopefully within this month, we will see we should be able to add to 2019 imagery into this application taken from this last spring. So we're hoping to bring that to you soon. This imagery is pretty good stuff. It's two to three inch resolution uh, for each pixel, which is a lot higher than what you're going to have, say, uh, available to you for free in Google or Bing Maps. All right. So not only are you looking at the most recent imagery, you have available to you imagery going back in time, what we call historical imagery. An easy way to navigate that is using this time slider that automatically opens whenever imagery is being shown. So if I go ahead and slide back here, we're in Tyson's, we can see a lot of changes. We can go to 2015 or I can slide right now. You can see the construction of the hotel and then Telesat building on the north side of Tyson's Mall which is fully built now, or I can go back even further. Let's see what it looks like in 2007. A lot of things that were built are not there. There's the old Circuit City that was there that's got torn down. Uh, we can even get going back in time, 1980. The mall is there, Galleria, maybe an idea in somebody's mind, still undeveloped. We can all the way go back to 19, 
53, and then 1937, we even have imagery. And some people may wonder, why do we call Tyson's Corner, Tyson's Corner? So if we go back right here at the corner of 123 and 7, back when there were two lane roads, there's a person named Tyson who had a store right there at that corner, hence Tyson's Corner. It's changed a little bit since then. All right, so we also have imagery that's not just this top-down imagery, looking at those rooftops, we have another kind of unique oblique imagery, which uh, Brendan's gonna talk about. As Matt mentioned, we have on the basic toolbar, this bird's eye view. This is oblique photography, imagery from a 45 degree angle. So when, every time I click on that button, a window is gonna pop up, and in the bottom of it, you're gonna see an image from 45 degrees. I can zoom in or out just as I could anything else. You'll notice this purple cursor out over on the map. That is showing me the point that I'm looking at. As you mentioned before, I can expand or collapse the data frame on the left to give myself a little more real estate. So I'm going to do that now. If I take that purple cursor and drag it, the imagery below will update corresponding to where that cursor is. So I move it over to this location. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And so I'm <clears throat> tracking along with the base map. The workflow that we use most of the time is we hit this button in the upper right of the imagery window that allows me to pop the imagery out into its own session. Uh, it's actually working in concert with the base map. So if you have a dual screen setup, you would see the base map and the jade on one screen and the imagery on another screen. So here I'm looking at that area of in, in Tyson's. And if you click on this layers tab, I could turn on some additional layers. So if I turn on the street names, I'm seeing the street names draw over top of the imagery. I'll turn those back off. But what's really cool is this, oh yeah. <clears throat> um, one other uh, thing I wanna note about the oblique photography is not only can you look at it from one direction, you can look at it from any cardinal direction. So if you look at this button in the upper left here, that allows you to control that. I'm gonna click the arrow and I'm gonna rotate around. So now I'm looking at it from north, east, south, west. So I'm looking at any point in space from all four cardinal directions, should I so choose. And again, we have different levels of uh, this pictometry imagery, and this is 2019 imagery that you're looking at. But if I, if I look at the drop down, I can look at all the years of imagery. I'm going to open up this button on the right. It shows, <clears throat> uh, allows me to look at two years of imagery at the same time. So as I look at this one, I'm going to choose on the right to show. 2007 of the same location. Notice the difference as I can see between 2007 and 2019. So lots of really cool things you can do with uh, the oblique photography. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna close out that window, move back to the jade, talk a little bit about uh, visibility of layers. If I click the expand collapse, I'm gonna get my data layers back. I'm gonna open up the property and planning <clears throat> group. Now you'll notice when I did that, the land description is turned on, but I'm not seeing anything draw on the map. That's because you have to have the group turned on to see anything below it. You'll notice these things are grayed out. So once I turn that group on, the land description group comes on. As I open up that group, <clears throat> I'm still not seeing anything draw. That's because I'm not at the proper scale to show the data that I have turned on. If I turned on common areas, that would draw because uh, they're actually green and they, they drew on. You can see those. The parcels, however, and the address points and the subdivisions are all italicized. That means they are not going to draw until I zoom in. If I zoom in a little bit more, you'll notice the parcels now start to draw and they are no longer italicized. Address points is still italicized. I'll zoom in a little further and now they pop on as I've moved to the appropriate zoom. Again, what we're doing here is we wanna show data at appropriate scales. So we don't wanna have them on at all scales or you would just see 
whole bunch of clutter on the map. Okay, working in this same group, one of the cool things about the Jade is you can make data transparent. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to turn on the Tyson's group. And at the same time, I'm also going to turn on imagery. And let's make sure I have the latest year of imagery. I'm going to go back to 2017. So what's drawing over top of here is this special group of layers on Tyson's. And if I open up that group, and scroll down, you'll see that I'm drawing the conceptual land use layer, which is a polygon layer and sort of a, and a fill. So I don't see what's underneath it. But if I grab this slider bar here to the right of the Tyson's group and move it to the left, notice how the imagery sort of bleeds through. So you can sort of, you can see two uh, thematic layers uh, or even base maps at the same time by using this slider slider bar. So if I go all the way to the left, I make it completely transparent. If I go all the way to the right, it's completely opaque. But here in the middle, I'm seeing both sets of data at the same time. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and keep that opaque so we don't forget about that. <clears throat> all right. Uh, right now, you can see we have a lot of layers, a lot of groups. Uh, it's a hard to manage all these. If we're scrolling through 170 layer plus all the time, it's easy to forget what might be on or off or get a little confused. So if I want to go ahead and say turn on the vegetation layer uh, right now, if I'm up here, it's not easy to see that that vegetation layer is on. If I want to turn off, I can turn off Tyson's to see it. We can see it on here, but I don't know necessarily where that vegetation layer is. I have to do a lot of scrolling. I want to go ahead and turn on parcels to maybe subdivisions. So we have some things to look at here, but it, with all the layers that we're showing here that are not even visible, kind of cluttering up my layers panel, let's see if there's a better method. If we go ahead and click what we call the hamburger button, but formally the panel actions menu on the upper right of the layers, we have the option for showing legend. Here, we can see just the three layers that we have visible. I don't have to worry about all the other clutter of things I don't have visible right now forgetting the base maps for a while. So we got the parcels, subdivisions, and tree cover. Easy enough. If I want to go back and see all the layers, I click that arrow right here, and we're back to the layers list. So easy peasy. All right, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit to the west here in Vienna. Oops, let me not that much. Go out one more. All right, and if I go ahead and down towards the infrastructure environment, remember we have the stormwater infrastructure. So there are some stormwater infrastructure you can see in some of those color lines and uh, various symbols of nodes. In this little scenario, I want to say what kind of stormwater infrastructure is beneath the tree cover? So we have the vegetation representing the tree cover, at least as it was in 2015. And we have the stormwater. So the, what, the stormwater infrastructure that's not under the tree cover, we can see. But the one that is under the tree cover, we can't see because the tree covering is completely covering it up. We have the transparency option, perhaps, but that might be a little hard to see. But we have another option that's kind of unique compared to our other mapping applications, is we give you the control to change the drawing order of any of the layers on here. If you want something else on top, something else below, you can make that happen. The way we do that is with that layer panel actions menu or the hamburger button. Instead of showing legend, we're going to go to change layer drawing order. So if I click that one, we'll look at all of our layers we have there, 30 different layers. I'm going to scroll towards the bottom. And we have the vegetation, and we have the stormwater infrastructure. You can see stormwater infrastructure is below. That means it's drawing first, and everything above it will draw on top, like the vegetation, what we're seeing right now. I'm going to say, you know what? I want that above vegetation. So just like that, we change that now that is drawing on top of the vegetation. So you have that control. If you want to keep that, you can click done. And for the rest of your session, that'll be that way until you change it again. Or I can click reset and it goes back to whatever the default was. Also, we can go into individual layers or our groups rather to look at the individual layers. So here I am in soils. Instead of treating it like a group, I can look at all the layers we saw in soils and say, you know what? I want radon potential areas. I'm sorry. Grab the wrong thing. Radon potential areas to be above everything except for the official soil survey. I can make that happen. Again, I can either keep that by clicking done or hit reset. Let's talk about a few layer actions. So what I'm going to do is turn off 
the vegetation, and I think I'm going to turn back on base maps just for the sake of action. Now, <clears throat> Matt had the stormwater infrastructure on. Remember I said before how the stormwater, <clears throat> if you see a layer that's italicized, that means it's not drawing because you're not at the proper scale threshold. Or rather than using the scroll wheel just to zoom in and zoom out and guess, I can click this arrow here to the right, <clears throat> and I have a bunch of options. One of them is zoom to visible scale. If I click that, what it is doing is zooming the map in to the maximum visible extent of that particular data layer, the highest, <clears throat> the most data you will see at any given time. So that's, <clears throat> that's a way that you can uh, zoom to a particular scale for a layer. I'm going to also show you how we can do some labeling of layers. Let me go ahead and turn off those guys. Let's go into oh, right about here. And under parcels, we're going to click that same arrow. And we have some interesting options here. One of them is to customize and label features. So I'm going to click that one. And you'll see I have this button to say show labels. In order to do it, I click the customize button. I have some options. I could change the color and the font size. I'm just going to keep the default. When I click apply, what it's doing is it's labeling each parcel with the parcel identification number. That's the uh, field that I chose to label. And if I go back out, I have this option here to toggle layers on and off. I'm going to leave them off. But any time, with any setting that I do in the in the Jade, that's persist until I'm done with that session. If I go back into uh, layer visualizations and I click a customize style and just hit apply, I'm taking the defaults here, but I could change the actual symbology of the of any layer within the jade. I'm going to decide that I don't want to keep this. I'm going to click none. I'm going to be done. And there we are with customizing layers. Let's toggle those off from that section. So there's some interesting things you can do with layer visualizations. Okay, that was a good chunk of time <clears throat> on layers, what they are, how you can work with them. Now let's talk about some of the other tools that are quite extensive as well in the Jade. So let's go talk about first the basic navigation. Now we've talked about how you can drag and use the uh, scroll bar on your mouse to zoom in and out. You could also use the plus and minus here. But we also have some tools on the upper left here. By default, the tool in the Jade is always the pan. So if you don't have another tool activated, you always can drag the map. We also have the previous extent tool. Previous extent tool means it remembers every other map view you've had since you started the whole application. So if I go to previous extent, that's where I was before and before and before and before. And I can go back if I've been to 100 different places. I can keep walking back until I find the one I remember I was at. All right, there I was doing some of the analysis. As soon as you use the previous extent tool, you can use the next extent tool. So instead of going backwards, I'm not going forwards, and eventually I'll find the place where I last left it, uh, right around here. We also have the initial view. If I ever click the initial view, that takes me to the same view. Here's the whole county right here uh, that we get when we start the Jade application. All right, do we have a question? Uh, when will Jade become the default mapping system, or when will the other mapping systems be phased out and no longer available for access? So the Jade definitely is not going to replace all other mapping systems. It's complementary. So why a lot of our mapping applications we have available for the public uh, are targeted, that's actually a good workflow for a lot of people. They, they want certain kind of data. They're not worried about mixing and mashing a bunch of different layers. Those target applications is really the better way to go, and those will continue to persist and expand and get better. The Jade application is filling that niche where, where people want the ability to mix and combine a lot of different layers all in one system as a more general viewer rather than a targeted workflow. And occasionally, and some other tools you might find useful. We want all these to live together and coexist. Okay. So we also have, uh, there's initial view, and we have bookmarks. If I go, and let's go back to a previous extent here. If I want to save this, rather than having to find it in the previous extent and try to remember where it was, I can go to bookmarks. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark the current extent. Oops, I go ahead and click in the box here. Tyson's close in. All right, so I've now bookmarked that. I also have other bookmarks here that I could go to. So if I want to go where I was west of Tyson's, I can jump to that one. 
or if I go to bookmarks again, I can go to the one I just created. Bookmarks will certainly persist for while you're in the Jade, and they generally persist if you use the same browser and computer to come back to the Jade. It generally remembers that, but I can't guarantee that. If your cache gets cleared, some of your settings get cleared, that will go away. But like these other bookmarks that we were showing actually persisted from earlier sessions. Uh, in addition to uh, navigation, uh, we talked about the I want to. I want to right here are specific things that actually are repeats of other buttons and other sections. For instance, this run environmental parcel report or run a general parcel report is the exact same as the two reports right here. If you find it easier to go to I want to than clicking a tab and using the toolbar, that's great. We want to give you a lot of redundant ways to do the things that make the most sense for you. Let's go ahead and talk about the bottom of the screen tools. I introduced these. Uh, I introduced these before, but let's actually talk about how they work. Here we have the base map selector. If I go ahead and click that, I can change the base map. That is really the same thing as if, go ahead and minimize this here, we have the base maps right here. So I could click from the topographic to the zoning uh, to the real property. I even have the ability here, if I go to the right, to look, actually look at the imagery and to make sure the imagery. So the neat thing about this one is I didn't have to turn off the base maps that would be on top of the imagery. It automatically turns it off if I use the base map selector and I could use the year I want or go back like I will to the topographic. We have a coordinates tool right here. That's a little X, Y. If I activate it, the default is latitude, longitude. Wherever the tip of my pointer is, it's giving me the latitude, longitude in decimal degrees very, very precise. In fact, almost a false precision because our data is not that accurate, but it gives you very precise numbers. So even if I zoom in here, I can see the latitude and longitude difference from here to what it is across the street. The numbers change quite a bit. So you, with that many decimal places, you can get fairly exact with all the caveats that our data is you know, not you know, accurate to the millionth of a foot, for instance. We also have the scale bar here. Let me zoom back out. You'll see as I zoom back out, it went from 20 feet to 200 feet, or I go even further, there we are 300 feet and so on. So as I go in and out, you'll see what the scale is. And what's easy to miss in the lower right here is the inset map. The inset map is basically taking wherever you are in the map view, zooming out to give you better context. So here we can see the blue rectangle, which represents this whole map view right here. And then zoom further out, you can see all of the 267 highway in the north end of Tysons or more of 495 coming around here. So you get a better sense of where you are in the county. If I had moved this map, you'll see it move there. Another neat thing is you can actually use the blue rectangle and in the inset map to navigate to. If I want to go to right center it on 123 and Route 7, we can do that just by going right there. Okay, let's talk about some of the workflows. I'm going to move to my basic tools, go back to my initial view, close the base maps tab. One of the first default workflows we imagine most people will do when they use the Jade is a search. So if you look in the upper right, we have what's called the global search. So I'm gonna type in 12,000. Center Parkway and hit return. Now, I actually did this for a reason. It didn't find that because we're using the street types as they exist in our master address repository. Not a big deal. If I take off the street type, I can still find it. Hit return and it returned one record. You'll notice this yellow dot on the map if you're paying close attention, as I hover over the navigation bar, you'll see that it turns into a blue dot. That means it's selected. If I click on it, I'm actually zooming to that location. So there, once I zoom, I can now see additional attributes about that location. And there's these links, which we're gonna go into a little bit more detail later uh, to other applications. Let me go back to my initial view. I mentioned we can, I type an address. I can also type a common name. So I'm going to type Burke and hit return. And I've got a whole bunch of options. They, they appear as yellow polygons out on the map. As I hover over them, you'll see that the corresponding one I'm hovering over turns blue. 
I like golf, so I'm going to click on this record here, which is Park Lake Golf Center, and you'll see it zooms directly to that feature and gives me a little bit of detail that we have in our database about that feature. Let me go back one more time, and I am also can zoom to a parcel number. So I happen to have one here. So you'll notice when I did that, I had two spaces between the 01 and the 0016A. That's the way our parcel number is formatted. For a lot of the parcels, there could be uh, use there. It found my parcel. If I click on it and then hover over it and click the arrow, I zoom right to that feature that happens to be the South County Government Center parcel is information about that particular parcel. There's some more detailed searches, and I'm going to let Matt talk about those. Right. So in addition to the global search that Brendan did for place names and parcels and addresses, we also have specific searches under the Searches tab right here at the top. We have a parcel search. So what is the difference? Well, this parcel search does something called autocomplete. So if I start typing, say, 045, then all of a sudden, every parcel that starts with 045, and there's a bunch, that's a pretty broad number there, is available for me to choose from. So if I do 0551 space 01 space space 00, all those that start just that way, and here it's much fewer, I can just choose from the list. I don't have to type the whole thing. It might be a little bit easier to format to choose from a list than get every single character just right, with including those double spaces. You could say, that's the one I want. I could search for it. And then off it goes and takes me there, which happens to be that big one right there. Look at that, another golf club. Who would have known? Uh, if I go to uh, the address search, uh, this is another thing that auto-completes. So if I go ahead and type in monument, that's near the government center, I can find everything that starts that way so I don't have to finish typing and choose the one I want. And that problem we talked about street type, if you type out the full, full street type rather than the abbreviation, which is the official Fairfax County way, it doesn't matter because I can just pick it from a list. I can say, I want drive. I didn't have to know how we abbreviated that. I just choose it. I could put in the house number if I knew it and get the full address, or I can leave it blank. So if I leave it blank and do a search, It actually takes me to each address point here and shows me every address on Monument Drive. How many are there? I can see right here, there are 14 addresses on Monument Drive. If I want to see all these at once, I can look at that hamburger button once again and go to Zoom to All. Now we're seeing all those addresses on Monument Drive. And again, I can mouse over them and I can see, just like he did before, uh, all the possibilities and where they are. In addition, I can go to the street intersection search. This is something you can't do in the global search, but only in this button. If I go ahead and type again, monument, there it is, monument drive, I can then choose the other street that I want that intersects with monument. I don't have to type it in. It automatically knows every street segment that intersects with monument drive. And I can say, go to the um, Fairfax County Parkway. Where is that intersection? If I do search, it's not selecting anything this time, but it is dropping a blue point right there on the map and centering the map right there. So there it is, Monument Drive and the Fairfax County Parkway. Last one we have here is a subdivision search. Right here, you can just type in a subdivision you're looking for, the common name for that subdivision, and uh, select that subdivision and zoom to it as well. Go ahead and clear some of these out. Get rid of these selection lists. And give it back to Brennan. Okay, one of the things we are very excited that we are we have in this application, and I'm just going to go ahead and move back to Government Center Parkway here, is something called the Parcel Reports. Government Center. And I will zoom over. Move to that feature, zoom out a little bit. So on this reports tab, we have two reports. One is the general parcel report. One is the environmental parcel report. You have multiple ways you can get to these. You can get to them from the I want to menu. 
Uh, I believe there's also right-click functionality. But I'm going to click on this general parcel report, and for any parcel, remember this is parcel level data, I can click on, I'll try this one over here. It's going to generate <clears throat> the uh, a report. This is giving me a whole lot of information with just one click. So at the top, you see I have the property description with links to the deed book and page. If you have CPAN access and you click this link, it's going to go directly to that in CPAN. Uh, on the right, I have planning and zoning data. And you'll notice uh, contextual links to all of these types of information. So if you want to know what a little bit more about a commercial revital, revitalization district, for example, you click that link. In the middle, I have the property structure data. And the bottom, stuff coming from our Department of Tax Administration database, the property owner data, and the tax assessment data. Well, I'm going to go back over to the Jade. The other report we have is called the Environmental Parcel Report. I'll click on the Government Center property, and it's going to run this report. What's happening is it's doing a spatial overlay of a whole bunch of environmental layers uh, along with the parcel data. <clears throat> it's actually pretty fast in the way that it runs. And what I'm getting here at the top, these are all hydrological indicators. Uh, watershed, floodplain, percentage in a resource protection area. I would call your attention to what Matt said at the beginning of the presentation about the fact that our parcel data is not survey grade accuracy, but this is giving you the general context of whether or not you are in or out of a particular area. The bottom is soils information. Again, uh, descriptive text on the right as to what you're seeing, and then links to further information about that information in the report. Also, lastly, uh, you'll notice with both reports, there's a print friendly button. So if I click on that print button, this is your way if you want to save these reports about a particular parcel, you're going to come up with this print window. And then if you print and then save it as a PDF, that's the way you would save that particular report. So I will turn it back over to Matt. All right, so those pre-done parcel reports are uh, pretty easy to use, one and click. <clears throat> you get a lot of information. But I'm going to show you a little workflow you can use here that can kind of let you do your own kind of reporting on what's going on in a particular area of the map on the layers that you're interested in. So if I go ahead and close that address point here, and I'm going to go <clears throat> add a bunch of different layers. So under property and planning, I want to make sure I'm looking at parcels and subdivisions, which are already on. Uh, that's good. I can go to the special tax districts. Maybe I want to turn that one on to see if I'm in a special tax district. Also go and look at the electoral under community and see what uh, precinct I'm in. Or maybe, go ahead and turn that on. What precinct I'm in, what uh, supervisor district I'm in, that's good information. And let's look at some environmental things as well. If I go into infrastructure and environment, turn that on. And I want to see what uh, hydrology or flood situation I'm in. Uh, maybe I also want to see what soils What's going on here? So we're looking at a lot of layers. We're trying to make a lot of sense of this on the map. That can be difficult. It's a pretty jumbled we're looking at now. Uh, but we can actually use a tool here, a workflow, and I think it'll help make a lot more sense of it. I'm going to choose a different part of the county, do another search here. Let me go ahead and search for 4434 Shirley Gate. Did I write that right? There we go. So I even have to put the street type because that address point there, Shirley Gate Road. Remember, click once more. It'll take you there. So here's that address point. This is the parcel that I'm looking at. And I picked this one because there seems to be a lot of stuff going on in this property. No other reason. So if I zoom in here and I go ahead and click on that address point, this is without selecting any other tool, just clicking on the map, I get a little pop-up here. And the pop-up happens to be parcels. But that's not the only one I get. But for the parcel, I can see quickly with that, what we call a map tip, we see the parcel number and actually a link to a lot of other applications uh, that you can, with one click, go deep in that application for this parcel. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But in addition to parcels, I can, I can see what number I'm at. I can see that I'm in a subdivision, although this one doesn't happen to have a name. I can see that I'm in a sub watershed. Which one? This is the... Fairfax, I'm sorry, Pope's Head Creek Tributary, Psycho, PHP004, and so on. So it's a lot of information. If you're interacting with the county and want to talk about your watershed or sub-watershed, you can give them that information. They'll know what you're talking about. If you want more information about this layer, we provide a lot of links. A lot of layers have additional information. So if I click that one right there, 
on a new tab, and it'll open up a page that talks about watersheds. We'll let that load for a second, show you when it's there. In addition, we can see about watersheds. There's that watershed link. So it's taking you what is a watershed, how do we manage it? It's all on this page. So you're, you're not looking at this data in isolation. Going back to the Jade, we have the other watershed. Soils, we can see we're in soil 64B. What does that mean? Good question. Uh, I would could click this link here and actually tell me what all these codes for soils actually mean. Even going further, let's see. We got uh, a non-marine clay shrink soil soil here. That might be an issue in construction. So it's good to know, at least where I click, that what's going on. We're in the Eagle View voting precinct. Uh, we actually have asbestos soil here too. Another good thing to know for development purposes. And then supervisor district, I'm in Braddock, who right now the supervisor is John C. Cook. All right, so a lot of information you're getting just by clicking. If I click somewhere else, I get other kind of information. And I can keep going back around again too. If I want to see more information about something as well, if I say go look at this sub watershed, I can do view additional details. What that will do is it'll zoom to that whole sub watershed here, not just the part of the property we're looking at over here. We'll also see all the details. Every layer has additional, practically every layer has additional details. We don't reveal on that little map tip, but they're there to be seen if you click it. So we have what the tributary is, what the watershed management area is, its area and square feet, give or take, of course, uh, even its ID number that might be useful if you're interacting with the county right there. Is it an impaired watershed, yes or no? So a lot of details, almost every layer you can view additional de details and see that. All right, in addition to seeing whether you're in, you're on top of a feature or not and seeing some of those details, we do have those links to uh, integrations that we kind of reference like right here. So let me go ahead and find, go back to where we were at 12,000 Government Center Parkway. There I go. Remember, I just click this. It'll find it. And then I'll just have to zoom to it by clicking once again. So there we are in 12,000 Government Center Parkway. Immediately, we get the details here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the layers off just for fun so we don't see all that stormwater stuff. We've got a lot of stuff going on there. All right, going back to the address points. Whenever you have a result, by the way, there's a tab on the left panel. You can always jump back and forth too. Whether I click that here or look it over here, it's the same thing. I can even click it just like this. Oops, try that again. So we're gonna do look for the address point. Last one, of course. Oh, I guess I didn't click on it. I'll try that again. All right, well, I guess, oh, you're right. I don't have the address points on, I apologize. But anyways, for the address point here, we have these other links right here. These are other applications which will continue to maintain. The Jade's not replacing any of these. That with one click, because we already did a search for an address, you can take us to that address's portion of that application without having to open a, a window manually, search for the application manually, do another search inside the application for an address or a parcel. So for instance, we have My Neighborhood. For those that aren't familiar, My Neighborhood is an application we've had for years. I think this was our big, first big foray into web mapping way back in the early 2000s where you can see a lot of information about any address in the neighborhood around it, such as what schools are for their crime information, all the elected political representatives, nearest libraries or hospitals or parks. So with one click, we can jump there. Or I could go and click the land development information warehouse. This, I think, might be answering some of the questions we had before, saying, do we have a history of information of what happened on a particular property? So if I go ahead and click that one, it'd be a new window. Let me clean up some of these other windows. This one is for the government center. And here we can see a lot of the information of both land development and construction permitting and that type of information for this address. So we're in a big building here. So we have over 1,044 different records that you can explore. So not only can you go back in time, most other places will have far fewer. You can click any individual one and see the specifics of that. So this electrical inspection, you can see that. The fire prevention code permit, you can click it and see more details. Going back to the Jade. We also have real estate assessment. This is a very popular application independently. This is Department of Tax Administration, the people who assess the value of properties in the county. It maintains a lot of data about parcels and property, including ownership, assessment information, uh, what the property looks like, what kind of stories there are. All that information you can get with one click right here. Some of this is actually in that parcel report that Brendan showed. But if you want to get valuation and sales information going back in time quite a bit, you can see all that here as well. So I'm gonna clean up some of this since we open up a bunch of windows. Let's see if we can simplify things a little bit. 
click, 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 and back we go to the Jade. All right, so parse, I'm sorry, address points aren't the only thing you can get information on. We also have parcels. If I click a parcel, and I can do a few additional details is here, uh, whether I look in that map tip or in the additional details, we have links to things as well. But since parcels are different than addresses, you have links to different kinds of applications. We can go to the parcel report or general or environmental parcel report, the exact same things as here. Uh, if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Another way to get to the same report. We also have the real estate assessment. We also have something that's kind of unique, which is if I go ahead and click over here, because I think that's a good one to look at, uh, court recorded deed. So if I go to view additional details, that one, we go to the court recorded deed. For those that have what we call CPAN access, this is the county public access uh, courts um, site. If I go, I forgot to log in before, let me do that right now. I can immediately get to the deed, the last sales deed for any property, the official one that also references the official filed surveys. So if you actually want to see those individual plats, you can go in here and use this record. Uh, this is something you have to apply to get access to, but it is open to the public. You just have to go through the process to get there if you don't already have it, but a nice little integration there as well. All right, going back to the Jade. And what I want to talk about now is selecting. This way you can take map features you find in the map and actually handle them and analyze them and export them out. So you can use them outside the Jade, make a spreadsheet, do what you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this address point selection. And let me go ahead and back up to the top here. We're gonna turn on address points and that's great. All right, so if I go to the basic tools tab, we have the selection tool. So I'm gonna hit the select tool. What that does is it makes a tool selected for you to look at and say this is special for some reason. So if I go ahead and click uh, right here, I select a parcel and a voting precinct and a subdivision and a supervised district. Why am I selecting all those? All those exist wherever I clicked. And so I, yeah. So if I want to, I can actually see it by clicking what parcel I selected right here. And there it is. If I want to see what subdivision I selected, there it is, it's the Glen Alvin subdivision and so on. In addition, if I go ahead and close those results, I cannot do, I don't have to do just one at a time, I can make a rectangle with the same tool. Actually, let me skip that, let me do it on both subdivisions here. And select everything that rectangle takes. And anytime I click one of the layer types, it will highlight everything in yellow. So I have 18 address points. And I can mouse over like we've done before and see which one we're talking about as it turns blue. I can also go to parcels and I can see those parcels. There's 28 parcels that I actually selected right there. Mouse over and see which ones are blue. All right, if I go back here, something we can do as well is if we want to add or subtract from that selection list before we get into the buffering, uh, we can do that with the enable add results. If I go ahead and click there, I can make sure I'm adding these parcels Am I using the select tool? We got something selected here. All right, it gets a little hiccup there. Let's try that again. So if I go and I disable add results before I'm, I'm enabling it, it's checked. Yeah, I will, I guess I will go over here because that's too close to the other tool. I'm now adding parcels. You know, went up the parcels are now up to 34. There were 28 added to it. If I want to, and I go ahead and click the parcel, it's probably easier to see it that way. If I want to subtract from that, say, oop, I selected one too many, I can go and say, you know what, I don't really want those anymore. Select them this way. And now, if I go ahead and click parcels again, you can see those parcels are now gone and no longer selected. Okay, buffering. So let me go ahead and clear everything I selected so far. And I'm also gonna do something else here, because I have a lot of layers that I have turned on. Let's simplify this, because you asked a question about ownership information. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little trick here. That's gonna be with the themes at the top. We have imagery theme and the all available layers. If I click imagery theme, this turns off a lot of different layers here. It turns on imagery and just has parcels and I believe roadways and that's it. It's a way to simplify just looking at imagery if that's what you wanna do. But if I go back to the all available layers, we can turn on that theme again. What it does is it defaults all the layers to what you see when you first open the Jade application. That way I don't have to go layer by layer and turn things on and off just the way I want. Just to get back to the starting, I can just do that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do the enable buffering. If I go ahead and en uh, enable buffering, I'm gonna disable subtraction. And I'm gonna say, I think you use the example of 500. So let's try 500 in there. It is feet, I think you wanted that as well. If I go ahead and continue, I can now, wherever I click, I will select all the parcels within 500 feet of where I click. That little graphic is just showing you what that 500 foot circle looks like. I clicked right there. That's every parcel. So here's a list of 107 parcels. By the way, we only show it 50 at a time, but there it is, 107. Okay, this is probably not the best way to work with that list to do what you want to do. So the neat thing we can do is if we hit that hamburger button on the upper right again, is we can go to switch to table. Under switch to table, instead of seeing in a list, we now can see all 107 results at once. Same idea, if I go down here, I can see in blue where it is on the map and we can actually get that ownership information. There it is, there's the owner, there's a city state address. Sorry to any of these owners out there, we weren't picking on you, we just that's how it happened to come up. And what you could do is you could adjust this table to be just what you want. Maybe you don't care about the county deed book and page, so I can just get rid of those. Uh, you do want the site address. Do you wanna email the site or do you wanna email the owner? Let's say we're just gonna email the site so we can uh, let these owners live in peace. Do we want the parcel identification number? Is that important? Maybe not, maybe we're just doing a mailing list. So here we have the side, oh, didn't I mean to do that? Well, forgot about that, I didn't mean to get rid of that one. But we can go ahead and actually export this list out by using an export, well this time we'll do XLSX. So if I export to LSX, XLSX, that's an Excel file. I can go here and open it. And we'll let that process for a second and we'll actually see that in a spreadsheet. And I should not have deleted the field that had the city state uh, in zip. That's probably pretty important for an address, but all that information is here. And you know, it's just hiding a little bit. If you double click, you can see that. There it is. There's a site address. So if you wanna do a mail merge and make some labels, go for it. You have that information at your fingertips now from that buffered list. Right, let's close this up. All right, last couple topics. And thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we have measuring, drawing, and map making. So I'm going to go ahead, since Matt has it already zoomed in, zoom back to how am I get rid of this? All right. And I'm going to go back to Government Center. You, we do have measurement and drawing tools and, of course, map making tools. So I'm going to do a quick measurement. I'll click on an area. And let's suppose for Celebrate Fairfax, I want to have a giant booth. It covers this area in the middle here. You'll notice as I'm clicking around, I'm creating the area. I could do that uh, again if I wanted to, create a couple areas over here randomly. If I don't, if I do a bunch of areas and decide I don't want one, I can click this erase button and just erase one of them, or I can click the clear to erase all of them. Okay, <clears throat> we also have drawing tools. So I decided this is the area that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and label it and I'll put my text feature on and I'll say this is my setup area. And once I do that, I get those features. Notice once I turn that button off, I now can click and select any of these and change the properties. Same with the, with the measurement. Lastly, I've decided I want to share this and send it as a map. So I go back to my basic tools and I click the PDF button. This pink area that comes up over top of the map is what's going to appear on my printed map. And you'll notice I've got some different options over here. I'm just going to go with the default. And I'm going to call this uh, Celebrate Fairfax Map put some notes, my area, and I click the print button and <clears throat> it's going in the background and it's generating a PDF. If I click open, you'll see I have my map, my title. Uh, in the right, you see the, the layers that were turned on as a part of the map. <clears throat> and there I've created this PDF. One thing I don't know that we mentioned uh, is you have this ability to share. So anything I do, I can I could email uh, the selection that I've made and or email my map to somebody else. So 
really cool functionality there. I believe we have reached the end. Uh, we appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to spend with us this morning. If you have any additional questions, remember that there is that feedback link in the application. We do want to hear from you as to how you're using this, what you're using it for. We absolutely use your suggestions uh, when we update these applications. All right, it looks like uh, no other questions came in. Again, you always have that feedback button. Uh, if you want to ask us something in the future, uh, we will respond to those as well. So thank you so much and have a good day.